अवतार मेहर बाबा की जय वेलकम ऑल टू दिस स्पेशल सहवस कमेमोरेटिंग 100 हंड्रेड ईयर्स ऑफ कमेंसमेंट ऑफ बिलवेड बाबा अवतारिक मिशन एट मंजिले मीम इन बॉम्बे मंजिले मीम मीनिंग द हाउस ऑफ द मास्टर वॉज द रेसिडेंस मेहर बाबा यूज फॉर हिज वर्क विथ हिज मंडली फॉर अबाउट टेन मंथ्स स्टार्टिंग नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी टू डिसाइपल्स फ्रॉम ऑल बैकग्राउंड व ब्रॉड टूगेदर टू अप्रिशिएट ऑल व्यू पॉइंट बट हैव ओनली वन व्यू इन एवरीथिंग दे डिड एंड दैट वॉज टू फॉलो फेथफुली एंड इम्प्लिसिटली द वन मास्टर अमंग दैम मेहर बाबा This online sahavas organized by Endless Journey of Love in collaboration with Avatar Meher Baba Hyderabad Center comprises of related songs ghazals and poems a talk by Sri Sridhar Kelkar ji and a special film on Baba's work at Manjile Meen let us all enjoy the love feast jai baba prietam meher baba tana avatara karyakramanni sarigga vanda samacharala kritam బొంబైలోని మంజిలే మీంలో ప్రారంభించారు ఈ దివ్య సంఘటన యొక్క శత జయంతి సందర్భంగా ఏర్పాటు చేయబడ్డ ఈ ప్రత్యేకమైన ఆన్లైన్ సహవాస్ కార్యక్రమానికి అందరికీ స్వాగతం ఎండ్లెస్ జర్నీ ఆఫ్ లవ్ మరియు అవతార్ మెహర్ బాబా హైదరాబాద్ సెంటర్ వారు నిర్వహిస్తున్న ఈ సహవాస్ కార్యక్రమంలో సంబంధిత గజల్స్ కవితలు గీతాలు శ్రీ శ్రీధర్ కేల్కర్ గారి ఉపన్యాసం మరియు మంజిలే మీంలో బాబా చేపట్టిన కార్యక్రమాన్ని పురస్కరించుకుని తయారు చేయబడిన ప్రత్యేకమైన చలన చిత్రం ఉంటాయి సన్ ఉన్నీస్ సో బాయిస్ మే ఠీక్ ఇసీ దిన్ ప్రేతం మెహర్ బాబానే బొంబైకే మంజిలే మీమ్ మే అవతారీ కార్యక్రమం కా శుభారంభ కియా ఇస్ దివ్య వృత్తాంత్ కే శత్ వర్ష్ కే సందర్భ సభీ కా హార్దిక్ స్వాగత్ హై ఎండస్ జర్నీ ఆఫ్ లవ్ एवं अवतार मेहर बाबा हैदराबाद सेंटर के द्वारा आयोजित इस ऑनलाइन सहवास कार्यक्रम में संबंधित गजलें गीत और कविताएं होंगी श्री श्रीधर केलकर जी द्वारा एक प्रत्येक वार्ता होगी अंग्रेजी में और मंजिले मीम में बाबा के कार्य को पुरस्कृत करते हुए निर्मित एक प्रत्येक चलन भी दिखाया जाएगा आइए कार्यक्रम में आगे बढ़ते हैं जय बाबा In early days Meher Baba's relationship with the Mandali had been that of good friends but in Manjile Meen this relationship changed completely the Mandali learned the paramount importance of obeying Baba's instructions he would constantly impress upon them how important it was to obey his every command no matter how insignificant it might appear During these days sometimes baba himself would dictate one line or a couplet and ask the mandali to compose a poem from it once he gave the first two lines of a couplet to dr abdul ghani munsif baba's childhood friend and disciple who wrote the ghazal in urdu let us now hear the english translation of the ghazal where is the question of justice This is recited by Meher Veena Rangnekar of Mumbai. Jai Baba. Where is the question of justice? For the lover who dances to the master's tune, where is the question of justice? the breeze of your lane is not found even in heaven the fragrance of the best of musk is unequal to it o oh, beloved my trapped heart is now at your feet it is up to you to manifest your godhood through it or not if he is said to be absolutely independent does he care if the one at his door accepts him or not my bowed head is not at his threshold for nothing but i don't know whether he will murder me today 
or not? Why is your attitude different than what it was before? There is some secret behind it, whether my heart understands it or not. Ghani says, he is so intoxicated by your manner and bearing, he doesn't care whether it is like the sweet nightingales or not. What is real love? The next song in Telugu holds the answer. Love that surrenders to the highest of the high. Love that offers each and everything at his feet. Love that is governed by the beloved's wish. Love that imprints Meher's name in one's heart. Love that lives and dies for love alone. Sarvonnatuni Sharanani Namnina Preme Prema. Song sung by Brother Gopala Krishna Meher Gopi and group from Hyderabad. Jai Baba. अवतार मेहर बाबा की जय सर्वोन तुने शरण निनमिन प्रेमे प्रेमा सर्वार्पण तो सन्निधि चेरिन प्रेमे प्रे सर्वो न तुने शरण निनमिन प्रेमे प्रेमा सर्वापण तो सन्निधि चेरिन प्रेमे प्रेमा सर्वो न तुने शरण निनमिन प्रेमे प्रेमा सर्वापण तो सन्निधि चेरिन प्रेमे
Shri Sridhar Kelkar needs no introduction. He served as trustee and chairman of Avatar Meher Baba PPC Trust. Sridhar Ji's wife Parvez was daughter of Dina and Naval Talati. Naval Talati has been a close disciple of Beloved Baba since the 1920s. Let us now hear from Sridhar Ji on the occasion. Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Jai Baba, I am happy to join this virtual celebration of the centenary of Blair Baba starting his stay in Manzil Emim in, in Mumbai in May 1922. After <clears throat> Baba Upasani Maharaj told me, Merwan, whatever I have I've given to you, now you can start your mission for which you have taken this avatar. And in January 1922, Baba left Sapori. And for some time, for a few months, he stayed in Pune, where he had asked one of his close disciples, Sadashiv Patil, to build a small hut for him in which he can stay. So it was barely enough for one person to sleep, the hut in Kasbapet area. And there, gradually, people started gathering around Merwan, who was still known as Merwan or Sadhguru Mer Baba. And this is where he collected all those disciples or Mandi members who were going to be with him throughout his avatarhood and stay with him, leaving everything what they had, their families and everything behind. So, this was the first attempt to gather the future disciples in Kalwa Pet Puna. For a few months, Baba stayed there in that hut. And then, he decided <coughs> to move to Bombay, as it was known in those days. Now it is known as Mumbai. And on 22nd May, 
Baba started walking to Mumbai. There were trains, buses, but I don't know why he preferred to go on walking. And around 45 of his disciples from various backgrounds, these people were a different religion, they were Hindus, Muslims, Zoroastrians, all sorts of people were there, some were young, some were old. And they decided to dedicate their life to the beloved and obey him 100% for whatever he wanted him to do. And only promise Baba made was that he will give them something which for which they were aspiring. Whether the God realization, Godhood, we do not know what it was. They did not ask. But just believing him, they had kept 100% faith in him and joined him. And that is how these 45 companions started walking with Mer Merwan to Mumbai. They were not used to walking, not used to any hard work also. So it was great difficulty for them to walk all these ways. They many developed blisters on their feet. Feet were swelling, swollen, like that Dr. Ghani, who would not do any hard labor, would not lift his hand, also do any work. He had also to walk and he found it very difficult to walk. But being obedient to Merwan, they made great efforts to walk. So for nearly two days, they walked and finally they came to the town of Panvel near Bombay, on the outskirts of Bombay. <coughs> and then Baba thought that they will not be able to walk anymore. So he hired a truck and they travelled in the truck to Mumbai. They came, first they went to a Darga of a Muslim master first, paid their respect, Baba asked everybody, Baba did not himself go inside, but Baba asked everybody to pay their respects. And then they went to Munshi Rahim's house at Chani Road area in Bombay <coughs> and stayed there. They had a bath. Baba also had a bath. Baba never liked to have a bath, but after these two days, it's grueling journey. They must be very dirty and sweaty. It was the month of May, very hot and humid. So naturally, they he, they liked to have a bath, they had a bath and then had some food and they started with Mr. Rehm's house. Then they started for a search for suitable accommodation in Bombay. In those days, it's not difficult to get accommodation. It was in the, in the 1922, where the houses were easily available on rent, not like today. Today it's impossible to get a house on rent unless you pay a big price for that. But in those days it was possible. So in Mumbai's Dadar area, or central area, near railway station, they found out a bungalow available for rent, a big house and a large compound inside. So it was very suitable at what Baba wanted for these people, about 45, 50 people to stay there. So that was selected and then there are big rooms. So for these everybody only to stay, they made partitions with uh, uh, gunny sack, gunny sack uh, covering partitions they were made and the small rooms were made over two persons can stay inside and on the floor, no no beds or anything. Then one room was selected for Baba to stay and there was a kitchen, there were two kitchens because in those days the cooking for Parsis and Mohammedans was done in one uh, kitchen and for the Hindus it was done in another kitchen. It was segregated kitchens, you know. Baba had not yet mixed them all available together. Of course the food was vegetarian but these sort of arrangements were there. And then the large compound was there 
so gradually they leveled that compound make it suitable to play some outdoor games like kho kho cricket and in the evening they used to play the games there so this is how gradually they established themselves in this manzile mim that name named that building it is not the original name of the building but baba named it manzile mim the house of the master meaning house of master and the, the, this baba stay there started now the it was not easy easy for this mandli to stay there the conditions which baba had laid down very harsh for living with baba one thing they had to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning 4 am have a cold water bath no hot water bath have a cold water bath and then finish their morning ablation in about an hour and then from 5 to 6 take any god's name for one hour i mean made it that god that god's name then after 6 o'clock will be the breakfast there are some games to be there some other programs would be there but they have to get up early of course they have to go to bed also early in the evening at 7 7:30 is in that but this was the first condition to get up early then the disciples they were not allowed to read write anything they could not to the extent if they went out they could they were told not to read the boards on the shops also and and then not to converse or talk with any outsider except the, the, their own companions not to talk except when necessary for this what to work they were doing because baba asked these people to gradually find some employment for whatever according to abilities whatever employment they can they could get they some started working outside and uh, baba even went to the extent of buying a flower mill where the, flower, the grains can be ground for money and that is how some business was all started just to keep some people engaged there no money they was ever made up out of this all these ventures so this was in the conditions and there are under several conditions where they are long about 28 29 different conditions where they are living they could not have any uh, outside food nothing like no contact outside absolutely no contact with families also but baba of, of course baba used to send money every month to all the family members families by money order those who were staying with his mandli were staying with him for the for the upkeep of their families baba used to send money according to each needs and in that money order would go every month that was arrangement was made so the, the, these people did not to worry about the maintenance of the family that was taken care of by baba but some of this condition sometimes like not to talk any outsider one day sarosh was after was you are traveling in a train and one of his school friends he recognized him and asked sarosh how are you and sarosh would not respond to him sarosh did not show as if he, he knows him and that fellow was very remember he was, what is happening to sarosh why is not talking to me after some they say i might be mistaken with somebody else but sometime he said no 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 it is definitely sarosh nobody else so again he approached sarosh and sarosh would not talk to him at all finally with the station with sarosh had to get down came and sarosh walked out of the train after coming to manzil he narrated to baba all this funny incident this what happened so baba said wonderful we do did good job but now invite that friend and let him come here and meet me also so then sarosh invited that friend to this so this sort of was under order was adi whenever they were free adi uh, then uh, gani and uh, one, one 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 more person they had to stay sit in front of baba one in front, one in the left one on the right one in front and even baba went to toilet they had to sit in maybe it's one would on the left toilet block the one on the right toilet toilet block one would stand in the front then you would stand in front that sort of orders were there we do not know or understand why the reason but master master had their own his own reason probably probably wanted to teach 100% obedience to his disciples and that is how the life in manzil was there it was, it was a very easy life and even the slightest breakage of baba's orders baba would get very annoyed and baba would, he being god in human form he knew everything what was happening even if he was physically present there 
and he would ask somebody, what did you do at such and such time? And that was, had to hear to reply honestly what he did. Sometimes he would ask suddenly, what are you thinking? <coughs> Sometimes some ladies would come for Baba Darshan, some, some beautiful ladies and, and this Adi and they were young people. So some thought would come to their mind. Some saying Baba would embarrass them by asking them, what did you think just now? And they had to tell honestly why, what, what, what happened. It's very embarrassing. But that is how nobody resented his orders. He was a strict order. And they stayed with Baba for this thing. So this is sort of, so I would say, the training ground for his disciple were mainly. For the future, when Baba wanted them to permanently stay with him, this was, a, I would say, a training session for a few months at Manzil Emim, which Baba held with these 45 people. And during, it was, he stayed for nearly 11 months in uh, Manzil, but a lot of activities took place during even, even these 11 months also. One most important activity was publishing uh, Upasanya Maharaj Life biography in three languages, Urdu, Marathi and Gujarati. So in three languages, especially the Urdu language is known only to Muslims. And with this, it was very difficult to sell the copies of this published book when it was published. And Baba asked his Muslim uh, like Ramju, Ghani to go into Muslim areas and display the what with this, this uh, bill, handbills of this uh, publication, Garibu Ka Sahara, that was the name of the, in, in Urdu, it was called Garib, Vahagrafi Upasana Maharaj, Garibu Ka Sahara. And not only that, they were asked to sell these books also. Now, the Muslims, they, they do not believe accepting in, in Prophet Muhammad, they, how can they buy Hindu master biography? And that too from other Muslim, but Ghani and Ramju and all these Muslim uh, disciples, they were asked by Baba to go and sell these copies in the Muslim locality, especially after the namaz gathering is over in the mosque, when the people come out, they were asked to go and hawk these books there. Some were able to sell to their acquaintances they gave. In one instance, I think Ramju went to some wealthy Muslim uh, person and told him about this thing. And, but he did not show any interest. Finally asked Ramju, what do you want me to do? So Ramji said, can you buy 100 copies? So he immediately took out 300 rupees, gave 300 rupees, said, give me 100 copies. So that also happened. So Baba also like helped, helped them tremendously. But somehow or other, it was a great difficulty in selling these books. And when Upasana Maharaj, Baba sent message Upasana Maharaj that I have published his biography. First he said, why do you want to publish it? And then, then he said, oh, what are profit you are going to earn from selling this my biography? First you send me 50% of those profit just now. So that sort of a funny uh, exchanges took place between the master and the disciple, you know. So this is what happened. And then this, what is Baba's motto, Master in Servitude, Sevaka and Prabhutai, this also was finalized during the Mandil days. And another most important thing that happened was, in October 1922, Baba had gone to Sakori. That was his last visit to Sakori when uh, Upasana Maharaj was in his physical form. Thereafter, many times Maharaj requested Baba to come to Sakori. Baba never went, only in 1941 42 somewhere. That Dahi meeting meeting took place where Baba finally agreed to meet Maharaj, but not in Sakori, on the outskirts of Sakori at the small village called Dahi so, till Pasana Mahara dropped his body after October 1922, Baba never stepped in Sakori. After later on, he did visit Sakori for a couple of times, but while Maharaj was in body, after October 1922, he never visited body. But during this visit, October 1922, Mehra Jirani happened to be there with her mother. She was staying in Sakori at that time, and this was the first time she saw Mirwan, Mir Baba in Sapuri and that was how the lifelong relationship of the beloved and, and his uh, 
what what the chief disciple Mehra took place, and then later on, of course, she came to permanently stay with him. But in October 1922, Mehra had the first glimpse of Mehra Baba. So these are some of the important message events that took place during the 11th period, 11th May period, and. This was a really, really a testing ground for all the disciples, and Baba also wanted to see how they are going to stick with him. As Upasana Maharaj told, when they when they departed from Sapori, Maharaj had told his the people who are going to go with with Merwan to stick to Merwan the postage stamp stick to a letter. That was Maharaj's advice. So the, as as a letter, the postage stamp never comes off. Unless it is removed possibly or by other means, it remains with the later. So like that, Ma Maharaj has told him, stick to Merwan in thick and thin, and he will give you what you are aspiring for. I will not be able to give you what you want, but Merwan will give you that. And that, that is how these people were trained in hundred percent obedience to beloved Baba. Whatever Baba said, they would do without any hesitation. To us. Many of Baba's orders, many Baba's actions would seem eccentric, but to them, they never even thought twice of carrying out that order. So this is how the Baba, beloved Baba, trained his monthly, uh, future monthly, in this 11th period, 11th month period in Manjil Emim. So it was very, I would say, a very important period of Baba's advent. This 11 months where he. Made prepared his mandli for his the future. Now, ten years back, in 2012, also <coughs> we had celebrated this Manjil Emi 90 years in Mumbai. At that time, there's a physical gathering where a lot of people came, close to about in within, within two kilometers of the Manjil Manjil the hall was uh, arranged, rented out. Within the Narayan Prasad, the same thing, mostly he did the job through his, uh, what the organizers called Endless Journey of Love. And we, I was also uh, attended that meeting at that time, that celebration. And <clears throat> what happened was, the, the owners of this manzil, because a lot of people used to go to manzil, even foreigners also many times visit manzil. In a dilapidated building, it's nothing is there now, the building is nearly uh, uh, over the collapse likely, but in more than 100 years old building of course. So, but he thought, they, they thought that these people will try to uh, claim heritage status for this building and they may ask government to give this building to them. So when they he came to know that we are going to have celebration, we are going to Manzil, they complained to the police that these people should not be allowed to come. So there was a large police bandhavas at that time and we decided to walk, to take a walk, two kilometer walk to go to Manzil and police said we cannot go there. Luckily at that time uh, our dear friend Khilani, Raj Khilnani was there and some people they spoke to the police authorities and then they said we are peaceful people will not try uh, make a disturbance, we'll just go there and say Avatar Baba and come back. So we were allowed to go there on the opposite footpath, not on the footpath on which the building is there. The, the, that entrance was barricaded totally by policemen and other people. So from the opposite footpath, we went, uh, called Avtar Vijay, and then he came back for our program. So this is how the importance of the building is there. I don't know what is going to happen in the future of this building. But Baba's this present Avtarhood, this, this Manjil, Manjil Emim, had played a very, very important part. So, after staying in, in Manzil in April 1923, mid April 1923, Baba decided to move out from there. Of course, thereafter he came to uh, Ahmednagar and later on this uh, <coughs> Arangao Ashram was established, Mera Baba established. But during this Manzil period also, when Gulmai once had come to see Baba there in Manzil, this topic of his future stay would come. Baba stay. Baba said, I would like to stay in some small village. And Gulmai offered that this land belongs to us. And she also told about the dream she had where uh, this uh, 
whose majal is there at uh, on a trust estate. Uh, so he, he, he was a Muslim saint. He once appeared in a dream and asked his mother, aren't you going to give me a sm small piece of land? So she showed him this Arangao land, but she asked him, how can you come here? Your disciples will never come here. She's far away place, but she said, don't worry about it. I want it because he predicted that my male Baba is going to come here and the whole world will be coming to this place. Gilorisha. So, Gilorisha. Huh? Gilo yeah, Gilorisha, Gilorisha, yeah, Gilorisha. And that is how Mehrabad came to be established. But this was the precursor to the Mehrabad Ashram. Mehrabad became permanent ashram for Meher Baba. But before that, Baba prepared his mandli, close mandli, for his future work. And that is why the manzil, the, this 11 month stay of beloved Avtar Meher Baba in manzil also very important. You can read in Lord Meher the detailed account of this 11 month stay in Meher Baba stay in uh, manzil Emim and how his disciples carried on carried with him and obeyed his order, all his orders 100%. Thank you very much for listening to me. Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai. At Manzile Meem, it was well known among the disciples that the master was an accomplished poet and loved to quote the poetry of Hafiz. On 19th July 1922, Baba requested that a few of the men start composing poetry and encourage them in their efforts. He told them to try with all their hearts without caring if the poems were polished. In one such attempt, Dr. Ghani composed this ghazal, O Meher, your love has made us forget everything. Let us now hear the renovation of this song by Meher Veena Rangnekar of Mumbai. Avtar Meher Baba Ki Jai.
Suffering which God is passing through in your name, and because of your friendship, is indescribable. A Pilgrim's Arti, an offering, a performance by Janus of Mumbai. This was originally composed by Cindy Love. Jai Baba. Oh, beloved, I have come to bow down to the ancient one. Except my heart, except my mind, I bow before your love divine. Mayhem, mayhem, let your love song fill the air. Mayhem, mayhem, my heart belongs to you. Take all of me, my life I lay down at your feet. I bring my cup for you to fill. I bow before your perfect will. Mayhem, mayhem, let your love song fill the air. Mayhem, mayhem. Give myself and all I do, the song of praise I offer you. I put my life into your hands. I bow before your perfect plans. Mayhem, mayhem, let your love song fill the air. belongs to you man with heart and soul I follow you I find you in all things I do drown me in your holy name consume me in your sacred flame man Mayhem, let your love song fill the air. Mayhem, mayhem, my heart belongs to you. Mayhem, 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 let your love song fill the air. Mayhem, mayhem, my heart. Belongs to you, man. My heart belongs to you, man. My heart belongs to you, man. Avtar Meher Baba ki che. One night, in Ghani and Kaak Sahib's room. Baba composed a ghazal in Gujarati within two hours. It was read to the men at manzile e meem and later translated into English by Baba himself. The ghazal was called Prem Ni Seema, The Horizon of Love. Let us hear this ghazal in Katie Irani's voice, one of Baba's women mandali. 
A documentary film based on Baba's work at Manzile Meem specially compiled for the occasion will follow also featuring a well known huma ghazal likhan padhan se nayar bazi avtar meher baba ki jai जलवी पाकदा नीच सौसरार खाक मी बाद आब मी नार माल के कोनो मकाते साहेब हर दो जहा जरा मा स्थिर दीज हार श्यामा भी जल तो रहो Sheva 
मते मन In July 1921, Meher Baba stayed in Sakori with Upasani Maharaj continuously for six months till January 1922. Baba was almost 28 years old then. In January 1922, Meher Baba was destined to leave Maharaj and Sakori and begin his universal work. A few minutes before his departure. Upasani Maharaj called him into his hut and with folded hands proclaimed Mehrwan you are Adi Shakti the primal force you are the avatar of the age Baba sobbed tears of infinite bliss and clutched the feet of his guru Guru Pasani Maharaj Sadhu Santo Na Sardar Upasani Maharaj held him in his arms for a long time Maharaj then said to his disciples I have given my charge to Mehrwan he is the holder of my key Baba said goodbye to all those gathered outside and swiftly climbed into a waiting tonga accompanied by Bailey and proceeded to Bombay by train. The day that age had long awaited has finally come. The avatar's divine mission was to begin. Upon reaching Bombay, Baba went to Munshi Abdul Rahim's house. Meher Baba had not bathed during his entire 6 months stay at Upasani Maharaj's ashram in Sakori. A photo was taken even before he had his first bath after 6 months. On 23rd January 1922 Baba along with few disciples went to Manwa An overwhelming experience of Meher Baba's omniscience was felt by some of the members 
it was during this day that baba referred to himself as being god conscious master a sadguru or kutub and mentioned his mandali the circle of disciples for the first time to acquire the gift of divine knowledge a person must have a close connection with a perfect master and it is this intimate spiritual relationship which will make me in the very near future share the infinite treasure with the 12 of my circle the early period of meher baba's life as a perfect master can be conveniently divided into three parts according to the places where he lived first the hut on the ferguson college road pune where he drew around him his first close disciples second manzil e mein at dadar bombay this stay was chiefly devoted to the training of his mandali for an arduous spiritual life third mehrabad ahmednagar where a new colony was established which has been his headquarters ever since from bombay baba had a thatched hut built for him in the ferguson college road pune by sadashiv and began staying in it from 27th january during this period of stay in the hut meher baba drew his circle of disciples to him with simple discourses and inspired them in may 1922 baba along with some of his disciples journey to sakori for upasani maharaj's birthday celebrations addressing those present maharaj said i have given my charge to merwan he is the holder of my key after staying in the pune hut For nearly 4 months Baba decided to journey to Bombay on foot thus ending the first stage of Meher Baba's spiritual activities A party of around 45 members of different religions went along with Baba Of the followers 12 were Muslims 11 Zoroastrians and the remainder Hindus Baba had made it explicit that each man would have to divest himself of all worldly responsibilities before joining him it provided a great experience to the participants in the matter of a rough life with baba a foretaste of many ordeals they had to go through later on After the food journey and a short stay at Munshi Ji's quarters at Charni Road in Bombay, Baba and the Mandali took up residence in a rented spacious bungalow, number 167, located on Dadar Main Road near Dadar Railway Station. The bungalow had an unusual name chosen by Baba, Manzile Main, meaning House of the Master. Baba and the group moved into this bungalow on 7th June 1922. The house was partitioned into 15 small rooms. Upstairs there was a large hall and on the right two small rooms. One of the rooms was especially for Baba's use and Gustaji stayed in the other. Baba allotted a room each to a pair in the group. It was never furnished. for on baba's strict instructions any article of furniture was forbidden until then baba's devotees had been contacting him infrequently for short periods at pune and elsewhere they were for the first time taken out of their worldly settings 
and were afforded the first experience of a kind towards a life of non-attachment and self-discipline under Baba's personal care and supervision. During this period, Baba imposed very strict discipline, controlling every aspect of the disciples' lives. Specific duties were allotted to the disciples. Ahmed Abbas and Asar Sahib were assigned the work of compiling and writing the biography of Upasani Maharaj in Urdu, which they did at the manzil. Masaji was in charge of preparing meals for the Muslims, Parsis and Iranis while Chaudhary cooked for the Hindus. Gustaji remained Baba's constant companion throughout the day and prepared his tea. Some of the men would do the household work while the rest were away at their jobs. Those who were doing jobs would return to the manzil by 7 in the evening after working during the day. Baba also had a set of explicit seven special orders for the inmates at the manzil to be followed. There were 1. To follow to the letter the spiritual instructions given by me. 2. To keep or break any special connection with one or more than one from the company or otherwise that I order. 3. To totally abstain for 12 months from intoxicating drinks or substances, as well as sexual intercourse, except when allowed with legal wives. 4. To eat, drink and dress according to the residence system. To avoid fish, flesh and eggs under any circumstances. 5. To be present in the bungalow premises from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. bearing accidents and mishaps. 6. To follow faithfully the external duty given to each. 7. Under no circumstances to give up my company, even if you find the whole world turned against me, except when ordered to do so. In addition, Meher Baba gave the following warning. If any one of these written orders is intentionally broken, I shall lock myself in my room and during my self-imposed solitary confinement, which may last for a number of days, I shall not take any food. Thus, he would punish himself when others broke the orders. Besides the seven orders that were issued at the outset, each day brought additional orders further restricting the men's usual habits of sleeping, eating, bathing, and enjoying themselves. On 28th December 1922, Baba laid out 28 orders in addition to the above seven. These orders cover finer details on the conduct of daily life, ranging from simple ones like taking daily baths, keeping rooms clean, to more difficult ones. One order is not to read or write without Baba's permission, whether in the manzil or outside. This order is so strict that if a disciple happened to read a signboard while passing through a street, he was considered to have broken the order. Another order was that no disciple should talk with anyone who was not of the party living in the manzil. Once while walking on a road, Sarosh had an encounter with an old friend. Sticking to Baba's order, Sarosh had to ignore his friend's repeated greetings. His friend thought that Sarosh had gone insane. Such embarrassing incidents were common occurrences to the Mandali. Some orders appeared to have no apparent outward meaning. For example, three disciples were told that whenever they were free from work, they were to sit close by him. Adi Sr. on Baba's right hand, Ramju on his left, and Dr. Ghani opposite him. Whatever the place or circumstances, even if traveling by train, they were required to carry out this order. Even though an order seemed to make the disciple look ridiculous, it had to be obeyed without question. Baba occasionally ordered one or more of the party to fast for a day or two. Those who had to fast were not exempt from work. 
on the contrary they were given more work sometimes they were ordered to feed others especially blind or lame beggars whom they had to bring to the manzil from various localities in contrast to fasting baba sometimes went to the other extreme and compelled some disciples to overeat sometimes baba suddenly used to ask a disciple what thought he had in his mind and whatever the thought he was required to express it what was more alarming was that at any time baba would suddenly ask them what they were thinking and they were required to admit their dreadful thoughts i was a i was in my teens i was 18 years old and uh, i used to go to a college commercial college and baba was so kind to me that one amongst the mandali who is pendu pendu's father was called masa ji he used to cook for the whole of the mandali and also cook for baba in the morning when we had breakfast together i had breakfast together with baba and then again at about 9 o'clock i i left i used to leave for my college then baba and then we came back in the evening it was a great distance for me to go in a, a local train so baba made me sit there and got the breakfast a special breakfast and morsel after morsel he used to feed me there i mean that love when i remember you say almost shed tears that for the perfect master he was called perfect master then and the avatar for him to sit there and with all love to his lover or maybe an insignificant women fellow to feed him morsel after morsel until the whole breakfast was over he used to keep so much patience as to feed me the whole breakfast then i was asked to go to the college and i was ordered that when i went to the college and came back from doing the hours of study i was occupied for study but during my journey to and fro i had to keep notes of all the important thoughts that i got and all the persons i spoke and talked to and who came in my college it was such a huge task for me i do not know now how to keep the notes of all the important thoughts during your journey every day in a local train about 10 miles away from dadar to fort area <coughs> so all that was a disciplinary training so one day baba had prohibited me to any 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 one of my old friends that i came across in the train i was not supposed to talk to him at all now one day of actually what happened i was traveling in a train like this and one of my old friends of the school days you see he came and sat right before me and he called me i did not answer <laughs> he comes near me he talks to me i turn my head like this you know the instructions are i am not to talk to him and he got so irritated he almost started abusing me but i would not move from my seat i would not talk to him at all so probably he thought that this fellow has gone mad or out of his head <laughs> he just uh, just uh, left the situation as it left me and walked away Uh, when the station arrived, you see the train stopped and he walked away. So it was such an embarrassing situation for me, and so it's just a part of his discipline. There was another friend, and another friend uh, my, of my school days. He came from Persia, a very tall, hefty man, six footer. He went back <coughs> to Persia, and after many years, he remembered me. and he came all the way from persia to india just to see me he was a very great school friend of mine and imagine he came to the doors of manzil ali standing outside the great compound of the manzil ali and coming from my, my college just entering that gate he sees me before me he asks me a question he tries to talk to me i don't give any heed i give no reply <laughs> this fellow keeps standing here i stay and walk inside and baba is there i quietly go to baba and baba i say this is an old friend has come shall i go and talk for a while and baba is so irritated so in you know, have no right to ask me this question because the instructions are there that you should not meet your any of your old friends and that man keeps on standing there for one full hour waiting for me to come out 
because perhaps he thought he knew little of Baba. He knew that he, I was under Baba's instruction, and maybe that without talking to him, I went inside to ask Baba, take Baba's permission, and maybe I come out again and talk to him. But he waited and waited and got so disappointed and went home and wrote to me a very nasty letter. Which letter came to Baba's hand and he asked me to just uh, uh, tear it up and throw it into bits. So I am just giving an idea of the discipline that he made us pass through during our stay in Brazil. Some Brazil disciples had a strict daily schedule to follow. One hour every morning was devoted to meditation, and Hindu and Parsi disciples were required to attend their respective places of worship each day, while Muslim disciples went to the nearest mosque every Friday. Each disciple was required to work. Certain hours were set aside for games. On birthdays and holidays, there were festivities. All facilities and comforts were provided in Manzil Amin. However, life was not all joy. The smallest as well as the most demanding order of Baba had to be explicitly carried out. Hence, no work was greater than any other. Slowly, Baba increased the pace of activities and imposed more restrictions as time passed by. Since each man had signed away his life to the master, no one really had any individual freedom. At times, they felt like prisoners, confined within the walls of his orders and instructions. Even on their outings, the men did not feel they were enjoying freedom. The master's nazar was always on them. In demanding obedience in apparently unimportant matters, the master was creating in each man a firm tendency towards absolute obedience to his orders. So their intellects would gradually become nil and their egos give way to following him. Consoling them, Baba explained the reasons behind such demands. If you do not develop the habit of instantaneous obedience to my words, how will you be able to obey me when I decide to give you that which is real? It is for your own spiritual benefit that I order you to do this or that. Remember, when the time comes for the gift to be given, you might miss that too. I am telling you because of that. For that moment is only a split second. If you miss that, then it is finished. That time won't come again. So, in Manzili Meen, 1922, it was a custom that after dinner Baba would sit with the Mandali and talk for some time and by 8 o'clock everybody would knock off to bed. And there we had a ship's gong to call people or when the ship's gong went, come on, disperse. So on that particular day Baba said, all right, go to bed. Enough is enough now. 8.30, go to bed. The last instruct, last of Baba's orders. Well, the Mandali dispersed. We had small coops, small partition rooms. Saros, Rustam, Adi, myself, Pendu, everybody just dispersed. Some goes to the bathroom, some goes to the water closet, some just talking. And... Uh, after about five minutes, the gong goes, summons, come on, we all assemble, what's wrong now, what's happened? Baba just stands there, we all stand at attention. He asked a question to one of the mandali, what were you doing? Baba was uh, washing my face. Next man, what were you doing? Baba had gone to the WC. Hmm. You! What were you doing? Baba was talking to such and such. Right. What did I tell you five minutes ago? 
Uh, we started fumbling. Uh, <laughs> Baba, you said go to bed. Then why are you not in bed? I told you to. You heard me. You said that, don't you? All right. Why are you not in bed? Why are you talking to such and such a man? Yes, Baba, our mistake. Look, when I give you any order, you shall follow it literally. I told you to go to bed, all right? Get straight into your cabin, unroll your bed, lie on it for five minutes, and get up again to attend to your needs. That would be following the order, literally. <laughs> never, never do contrary to my orders. Remember that. Don't forget it. In June 1922, at the Mansile Meen, Baba had started giving hints about his spiritual status. Once he explained, From the viewpoint of divine Gnosis, the Muslims progress from oneness, wahadat, to manyness, kasrat, and the Hindus from manyness to oneness. Thus, the Muslims and the Hindus represent the extreme and opposite points of a diameter of a circle with God as the center. Zoroastrianism is midway between the two extremes and hence the choice at this juncture of a Zoroastrian form in me as the vehicle of spirituality derived from Muslim and Hindu sources. It was during this period that Ghani and Pendu joined Baba to permanently stay with him during Manzil days. Ghani's homeo clinic wasn't working well. He sold it off and joined Baba. Pendu was employed in a restaurant in Quetta. He came to Bombay on some work and met Baba at the Manzil. Pendu requested Baba to be allowed to stay at Manzil. Baba accepted this request subject to the Manzil's conditions. Thus, Pendu joined Baba permanently till his death. During this period, Baba first mentioned the Islamic term must, the state of God intoxication. He explained what musts were and what these God intoxicated persons meant to him. The first must to come around the manzil was a Muhammadian, whom Baba would feed by hand, putting the food slowly in his mouth. In the later part of Baba's life, must work became an important aspect of his divine mission. During the period of stay at Manzil Amin, Baba paid two visits to Sakori, accompanied by some of his disciples in July and October 1922. The second visit in October turned out to be Baba's last visit to Sakori while Maharaj was still in his body. This visit also had another significance. It was during this trip that Mehra saw Baba for the first time. During their stay at Manzil, Baba often used to sing ghazals. On the evening of 12th October 1922, Baba for a while sang ghazals of Hafiz and explained their meaning to the companions. Being Thursday, Guru's day, Upasani Maharaj's Aarti was recited and for the first time, companions were allowed to pay their respects to Baba at the Manzil. Baba wanted to publish a book on Upasani Maharaj's life. He engaged Ahmed Abbas, also known as Khak Sahib, and Asar Sahib in writing Maharaj's biography in Urdu. On July 28, 1922, Baba went to Sakori with Ahmed Abbas to personally research the facts about Upasani Maharaj's life. Baba talked extensively with Maharaj for four days and nights. Maharaj's biography was also done in Gujarati and Marathi languages. By Baba's order during October 1922, final preparations for publishing Upasani Maharaj's biography in Urdu were intensified. Advertisement posters and leaflets were printed and a publishing company named Circle & Company was formed under Rustum's legal ages. 
Baba told Ghani to put up some posters printed with Upasani Maharaj's picture advertising the book in the Muhammadiyan locality of Juma Masjid and to distribute the handbills to Muslims there. When his fellow Muslims found him pasting the posters of a Hindu guru on the walls of the mosque, they teased and ridiculed him. Ramju faced similar embarrassing situation at another mosque. After sticking up the posters on the wall, he stood at the entrance way handing out leaflets about the book. He was rebuked and insulted by the Muslims there. After several months of writing and planning, a thousand copies of Garibon ka Asra arrived from the printer on 15th November, and selling these books became a regular activity at the Manzil Amin. One can imagine the difficulties the Mandali faced with this task of selling an Urdu book about a Hindu master. One day in early February 1923. Baba convened a session of the Gutta at the Manzil to have a motto. All agreed that this was needed. After many suggestions by various men, Baba himself, on the inspiration of the moment, said that it should be mastery in servitude. And it was officially adopted as the motto of Manzil Amin and later became the official seal of the master's work. On the last day of March 1923 Baba made an announcement to the following effect I now intend to bring the manzil stay to an end I propose to go with only a few of you to Ahmednagar I shall have to send most of you to your homes do not worry at all I shall allow those of you who will have to leave me to join me again the separation will only be temporary but remember that henceforth discipline will be more strict and the mode of living more simple whatever i may ask you to do you will have to do do not think of joining me at all if you are going to be ashamed to do menial work you may have to do the work of masons of coolies in short any kind of manual work therefore think well before you resolve to join me again prior to the 10 month stay in bombay meher baba's relationship with the mandali had been one that exists between good friends Those who acknowledged him to be their master or guru were unaware of the significance and absolute necessity of obedience to all his orders. In Manzile Mein, this relationship completely changed. The mandali were made to be aware that Meher Baba was their lord and master, thereby establishing the relationship that exists between any spiritually perfect god conscious master and his disciples in different ways the mandali learned the paramount importance of obeying meher baba's instructions in manzile mein they also accepted being away from their homes and thus remained detached from their families they were given the opportunity of living with men of different religions and communities something none of them had ever done before during this phase of their discipleship meher baba prepared the mandli for future strenuous training which would not have been possible without having spent those preliminary months living with him in the manzil leaving memories behind Meher Baba and the remaining 13 men left Manzil Amin on the night of April 19th 1923 for Ahmednagar
लिखन पढ़न से नयार बाजी लिखन पढ़न से नयार बाजी सनम का हर दम ख्याल होना सनम का हर दम ख्याल होना फिराक में भी विशाल होना फिराक में भी विशाल होना जवाब में भी सवाल होना जवाब में भी सवाल होना लिखन पढ़न से नयार बाजी लिखन पढ़न से नयार बाजी सनम का हर दम ख्याल होना सनम का हर दम ख्याल होना सनम का हर दम ख्याल होना किसी को इज्जत किसी को दिल बर किसी को कारुण कमाल होना आ किसी को इज्जत किसी को दिल बर किसी को कारुण कमाल होना किसी को हशमत किसी को अजमत किसी को हशमत किसी को अजमत किसी को हुसनो जमाल होना किसी को हुसनो जमाल होना किसी को हुसनो जमाल होना लिखन पढ़न से नयार बाजी लिखन पढ़न से नयार बाजी सनम का हर दम ख्याल होना सनम का हर दम ख्याल होना सनम का हर दम ख्याल होना किसी को बातिन खुदा शनासी किसी को जाहिर कमाल होना आ, किसी को बातिन खुदा शनासी किसी को जाहिर कमाल होना किसी को ख्वाहिश हराम की है किसी को ख्वाहिश हराम की है किसी को सब कुछ हलाल होना किसी को सब कुछ हलाल होना किसी को ख्वाहिश हराम की है किसी को सब कुछ हलाल होना किसी को सब कुछ हलाल होना लेखन पढ़न से नयार बाजी सनम का हर दम ख्याल होना सनम का हर दम ख्याल होना सनम का हर दम ख्याल होना किसी को जंगल की आर किसी को फैशन की चाल होना किसी को जंगल की आरजू है किसी को फैशन की चाल होना किसी को बिरयानी मुर्गी कुरमा किसी को बिरयानी मुर्गी कुरमा किसी को भाजी या दाल होना किसी को भाजी या दाल होना किसी को बिरयानी मुर्गी कुरमा किसी को भाजी या दाल होना 
लिखन पढ़न से नयार बाजी लिखन पढ़न से नयार बाजी सनम का हर दम ख्याल होना सनम का हर दम ख्याल होना सनम का हर दम ख्याल हो किसी को यजदा के दर की मिट्टी किसी को याक तो लाल होना किसी को यजदा के दर की मिट्टी किसी को याक तो लाल होना मेहर को कहता है खा की हुमा मेहर को कहता है खा की हुमा हमें तो रबुल जलाल होना हमें तो रबुल जलाल होना मेहर को कहता है खा की हुमा मेहर को कहता है खा की हुमा हमें तो रबुल जलाल होना हमें तो रबुल जलाल होना लिखन पढ़न से नया अरबाजी लिखन पढ़न से नया अरबाजी सनम का हर दम ख्याल होना सनम का हर दम ख्याल होना फिर आप में भी विशाल होना फिर आप में भी विशाल होना जवाब में भी सवाल होना जवाब में भी सवाल होना लिखन पढ़न से नयार बाजी सनम का हर दम ख्याल होना सनम का हर दम ख्याल होना सनम का हर दम ख्याल होना अवतार मेहर बाबा की जय the preserver and protector of all you are without beginning and without end non dual beyond comparison and none can measure you you are without color without expression without form and without attributes you are unlimited and unfathomable beyond imagination and conception eternal and imperishable you are indivisible and none can see you but with eyes divine you always were you always are and you always will be you are everywhere you are in everything and you are also beyond everywhere and beyond everything you are in the firmament and in the depths you are manifest and unmanifest on all planes and beyond all planes you are in the three worlds and also beyond the three worlds you are imperceptible and independent you are the creator the lord of lords the knower of all minds and hearts you are omnipotent and omnipresent you are knowledge infinite power infinite and bliss infinite you are the ocean of knowledge all knowing infinitely knowing the knower of the past the present and the future and you are knowledge itself You are all merciful and eternally benevolent. You are the soul of souls, the one with infinite attributes. You are the trinity of truth, knowledge and bliss. You are the source of truth, the ocean of love. You are the ancient one, the highest of the high. You are Prabhu and Parameshwar. You are the beyond God and the beyond beyond God also. You are Parabrahma, 
Allah Ilahi is Tan Ahuramasta and God the Beloved. You are named Isa, the only one worthy of worship. We, we repent, O God, most merciful, for all our sins, for every thought that was false or unjust or unclean, for every word spoken that ought not to have been spoken, for every deed done that ought not to have been done. We repent for every deed and word and thought inspired by selfishness and for every deed and word and thought inspired by hatred. We repent most specially for every lustful thought and every lustful action, for every lie, for all hypocrisy, for every promise given but not fulfilled, and for all slander and backbiting. Most specially also we repent for every action that has brought ruin to others, for every word and deed that has given others pain, and for every wish that pain should befall others. In your unbounded mercy, we ask you to forgive us, O God, for all these sins committed by us, and to forgive us for our constant failures to think and speak and act according to your will. Beloved God, help us all to love you more and more, and more and more, and still yet more, till we become worthy of union with you, and help us all to hold fast to Baba's Daman till the very end. Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai. I'm